If you are a working mother or mother-to-be who would like to strike a balance between caring for your family and succeeding in business, welcome to Mother Industrialist Live Show where we talk about entrepreneurship, parenting, and life. Kenneth Chu, the show host brings in a different guest every episode to share how to perfectly balance parenting and work. Today, more than ever, you can choose to live life on your own terms, to craft a future for yourself and your family that is emotionally and financially rewarding. So sit back and enjoy the show. So in this episode, we are going to talk about empowering moms through entrepreneurship. Hi everyone, welcome to Mother Industrialist Live Show where we talk about entrepreneurship, parenting and life and this episode is 59 episode. So in this episode, we are going to talk about empowering moms through entrepreneurship. I'm Kenneth Chu, the host and also the author of Mother Industrialist. So this is my book, Mother Industrialist. So in my book itself, I've interviewed 15 mompreneurs that I personally know in the past 10 over years. I work with them in media sales, marketing, and advertising. So in my book, I also shared with all the readers that you can use the three P's to start a successful mompreneurship business. So which is passion, purpose, and profit. So today is not about me, and today I have this really, really awesome guest that I have, I would say that I've um, followed her on Facebook, been really curious about uh, what she's doing because she advocates mompreneur. She brand herself as a mompreneur. Uh, she also brand herself as a, a mompreneur MD, which is, I'm very curious why is that uh, the MD is there. So later on, I will ask her on that. And she's a, a doctor, medical doctor by trade and by profession. She treats children and she's a mompreneur, coach and a speaker. So I'm really, really blessed to have her onto the show because she has made time. Uh, she's supposed to give a training, but uh, she didn't. She chose to come onto the show, which I'm really, really honored and really flattered uh, to have that. And um, Without further ado, let us welcome Dot Jen. Hi, Dot Jen. Hi, welcome, welcome to the show. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back. We are back now, and I got Dot Jen uh, on live again. So sorry for the technical problem, and now we are back. So as I was saying, um, what was I, where was I? Oh yeah. So before we start the show, um, there's a tradition that every guest get to ask the question of the day. Uh, out to the audience and also to the next guest. So, uh, Dodget, are you ready to answer the question of the day posted by the previous guest before we can officially start the show? I am ready. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back in. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm back. Just has a problem with the yeah. internet. Okay. Gosh. So while you're, you're thinking, thinking about it, uh, let me check if you are live successfully back again and. Um, so I you am. Have some, you have some time to think about it. Okay, I can hear you loud and clear. So, Dr. Jet, are you ready to ask, answer the question of the day? Yes, I am. Okay, <laughs> share, you, share you with us. Sorry? Uh, uh, share, share, uh, can you share it with us? Your answer? Okay. Yeah. Um, I cannot see. What's the question of the day? Sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, no. uh, okay. <laughs> oh, I have not asked you. <laughs> so yeah, sorry, but yeah. I guess the, the whole uh, technical thing just got the yeah. momentum. Okay, so uh, the question of the day is, what is the one biggest challenge in your life that turns into an opportunity? Okay, oh, so think about it. What is the one biggest challenge in your life that turns uh -huh. into an opportunity? So now you can uh, think about it and you can, if you have the answer, you can just share it with us now. Okay, um, it's kind of related. It's actually kind of related to my story why I became a mom entrepreneur. So the biggest challenge in my life was really when I became a mom, and and my when my son had this condition, and I was really like, you know, I'm I'm a if you if you know that I'm I'm a pediatrician. Mm. So knowing you know, if you are the pediatrician, you're most likely to know everything that's going to happen to your son, right? But at yeah. that moment, it was like, I'm really just a clueless, I'm just a clueless mother at that time. It was like, um, the pediatrician in me, like, 
took off. Mm. It was like it was a really clueless mom at that time because his condition is has no treatment at all. Mm. It, it you really just have to wait for it to for him to outgrow it. And at that point in my life, that was my biggest challenge because I feel like I'm this pediatrician and I should know everything, but I couldn't do anything to my son. And that was my biggest challenge. And it became actually an opportunity or, you know, it became actually an opportunity because it was at that time that I really knew what I'm capable of. I mean, I never thought I am capable of, you know, going into another another field, which is business. And that's where it all started for me. Mm. And that's my greatest challenge for me. That's my greatest challenge, which actually turned into an opportunity where, which I am in now, right now. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That, that is, that is a great way to start um, um, the show. And now we can officially kick start the show. So Dr. maybe you can, um, with that we have people on live and maybe you can say hello to them and um, welcome them. Let's welcome them. Hello, everyone. Sorry for the technical delay. You know why? You know the reason why my son accidentally unplugged the internet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now, but, but, you know, I'm really just so happy that you know, Mr. Kenshu invited me here. Like he said, we've been following each other for quite a while now. <laughs> Yes, and, and I really believe in what in his, in his mission, you know, in helping mom entrepreneurs. And I'm, I really, really am honored to be here. You know, thank you, Kenneth, for, for inviting me. You're, you're welcome. welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, welcome to everyone who's tuning in. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, you're welcome too because uh, like when you told me that you, you, you postpone your training and you come on to my show, you really make time for it. I'm really... Really honored to have you on, on live and a lot of your audiences uh, from the community, the mompreneurs. And uh, for those <laughs> who are tuning in, uh, do let us know in the comments. Um, say hi to us, let us know you're tuning in. And uh, if you have any questions for Dot Jet or even for me, do post it in the comment section also. Uh, let us know where you're tuning in from. Uh, most importantly is, uh, are, you a, are you a mompreneur or are you an aspiring mompreneur? Do let us know in the comment section. Um, do let us know um, any of your questions. We will be more than yeah. glad to uh, answer it. So before we, um, now we can officially start and maybe Dodger, maybe you can do a short introduction of yourself, especially for my audience uh, who have not uh, known you, uh, who have not, uh, have not heard of you. Do a short introduction of yourself. What were you doing previously before uh, you, uh, you started your business and way, way before what were you doing? And uh, currently, what are you uh, working on now? Or what uh, the, your current business, what is it all about? Just maybe you can do a short introduction of yourself. All right. So hi, everyone. I'm actually, I'm Dr. Jet. I'm actually a pediatrician. So before all of this mompreneur thing you know, came into my life or before I actually became one, I was really like a straight career, you know, career path, you know, mm -hmm. woman. I mean, it was like from ever since I was, I was a little girl, it was like whenever people will ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? It would all, I would always say doctor. I want to be a doctor, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a doctor. So finally I became a doctor. So I was supposed to be, I was supposed to continue my fellowship training in Australia for neonatology because that was what I loved about uh, the subspecialty in pediatrics. But then the thing happened, like what I shared just a while ago, I became a mom and my son had this condition wherein I really had to take care of him. Now it's a condition where it's called food protein and, and uh, induced enterocolitis syndrome. So it's a condition wherein he is allergic to the proteins mm -hmm. and his manifestation was really bleeding. So at that time, the only food that he could live in was actually my breast milk. So I was exclusively breastfeeding him. So that was the reason why I put off all my career plans and really took care of him. And along the way, along those, uh, no, along those lines, you know, I, I started thinking about how can I still, you know, I, how can I still grow? How can I, you know, how can I earn on my own? And that's where I became a mompreneur. So I was looking at opportunities, but I had so many criteria because, you know, I, if you, if you, people were asking me why, you know, why, why that kind of business, right? I mean, mm -hmm. 
I couldn't bake. I could, I'm not a crafty person. I couldn't make anything. The only skill that I know of is really pediatrics because mm. that's what I've been studying for all my life. And then the only thing I remember, the only thing also that I loved doing at that time was I loved writing about motherhood. Mm. I wrote so many posts about motherhood and that, I guess that started, that, that is where that started, the mom, mm. the mom thing. And then someone, you know, also a pediatrician, introduced me, actually his daughter, introduced me to this network marketing opportunity. And I was like, no, at first. I was like, no, I, I, not, that's a no-no for me. But then I got to know the, the company and the products and the science behind it. And I did some research as well. And that's when I got, really got interested. But the one thing that really interested me was it, I, I can do it online. So if I could do it online, that's okay for me. So I, I so I studied it further, and that's where I got to, to the business. Mm. So I got to the business. I did everything online, and if offline, if I had to meet some clients, but it's always with my son in tow because mm. I was exclusive. Like I said, I was exclusive, bre- exclusively breastfeeding him as mm. in direct lab. So I brought him everywhere in my meetings and my client meetings and. So that was that was my number one criteria. Mm. It has to be I have to do it with my son in tow or online. Wow. That's the reason why I got into you know, into the network marketing business. And it's actually Usana Health Sciences because I believe also in in health and wellness mm. as well. Mm-mm. Wow, that that is a really really inspiring. And that was what captured me because you were doing the business network marketing business in a very very I would say advanced way. Uh, using internet, you brand yourself, and that was what captured me. And you brand yourself as Mompreneur MD. So, what does Mompreneur MD mean? It actually started. Um, I people would ask me, "Did you plan everything from the start? You know, did you did you really? You know, I didn't know about branding when I started. I mean, mm-hmm. nothing, and I really didn't know anything about branding or marketing. I just knew one thing: I was a mom passionate about being a mom and I was mm. an entrepreneur so I just like kind of mixed that mompreneur <laughs> so it, then I started using the hashtag hashtag mompreneur hashtag mompreneur and it kind of grew from there and I realized people are actually you know there are a lot of moms as well mm. who are you know who resonated with that and I, it, it just started from there my pa- my very first page was actually the name of my very first page was mo- was just mompreneur. Mm. There was no MD mm. on it. There was no MD on it. But people were were confused when they find me because there are a lot of mompreneurs in Facebook. Mm. Now, there are a lot of pages with only the mompreneur name. Yeah. So I said, what is what is unique about me that separates me from the other mompreneurs? And I mm. said. Hmm. And I mean, I'm a doctor, and I I didn't want to, you know, I don't, I don't, I didn't want to take it out from me because you know I've spent twenty years of my <laughs> life studying, you know, studying medicine. I didn't want to take that out from me. So I just kind of, I'm a mompreneur, and I am still really a doctor. That's mm. why I attached the MD in it and the mompreneur MD. So people ask, what's MD? Oh, <laughs> it's actually a doctor of medicine, mompreneur, and doctor of medicine. Oh, is it's it? Kind of, Yes, yes, that's the reason. Oh, uh, medical doctor. Medical doctor. Oh, okay, okay. We don't we don't use yes. that in in I guess in Singapore. In Singapore. Yeah. Mm, it's yes, not, that's. It's normally the DR and that's it. We don't we normally mm. don't use MD. MD is like more like managing director, and that's where. Oh, uh, I were. see. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. That's something. But hits it here if you graduated from from doctor of medicine. Mm. There's an that to your name. There's an uh, attached MD. It, yeah. Okay. So what so, what really amazed me is um why did you okay, like like although your son has this medical problem and um you decided to to, to be stay at home at the same time yeah. you come across this opportunity to start a network marketing business, but mm-hmm. at the same time you understand hey you can use internet. Have you ever <laughs> thought of going back or are you still practicing or are you um I don't know. I just do practicing it. Well, at the moment, um, I'm not really like practicing the mm. clinic side. I mean, mm. being a clinician, you know, the pediatricians who go into hospitals, who go on rounds, who see patients. No, I don't. Uh, I don't practice anymore mm. at the moment. 
people will ask me, don't you want to go back? No, it's so, it's such a waste. You know, you mm, spent, yes. you know, I, I, you spent 20 years of, <laughs> of um, you know, studying medicine and then you're just going to like give it up. For, for me, I'm, I'm actually practicing pediatrics, but more on, um, on talks, like giving mm. talks about mm. it, giving, giving awareness about it, how to take care of your kids, like mm. that, more on that side. But wow. on the clinic side, uh, no more. The reason behind that is that I'm really more, um, my priority at the moment is really on family, mm. on my family, on, on my kid, uh, on my son, and on my on my husband. Mm. And then, you know, I believe there you can, there's only so much, like we only have 24 hours in a day. Yeah. And if I... If I spare some time for clinics, mm. you know, I would take out time from, you know, from spending on, from spending time with my son or mm. my husband. I can only, I, if you know, my team knows this, I only have like six hours of hustle time in my business. And if I took, if I take that away, you know, yeah. so it's going to be, you know, it, at the end of the day, it's going to be what is your priority and what really makes you happy or 10 years from now, mm. would you, where do you put more, where is your life more, you know, more, where you can put more significance in your life? Mm. I think that's it. But when you, when, when people ask me, are you still planning to go back into clinics? Yeah. If you ask me at the moment, I would say not anytime soon, mm. but probably, you know, when my son grows up, you know, you know, they're going to grow up, you yeah. know, they're going to grow up and they're going to forget like mom, they're going to not go with us anymore. So probably along those <laughs> times. <laughs> we'll I, see. We'll I, see. I, I, I guess by then you will have other uh, more meaningful ventures that you want to do. Maybe become yeah. a, a more established speaker <laughs> and, and sharing of mompreneurship. I, I guess you... you you because, you because from the things that you're building and the things that you're planning mm -hmm. upcoming, uh, I guess it might be a, a bit hard for you to go back to to, to practicing yeah. or even like like a, kind of like a desk bound or really bounded by the, the clinic, and then yeah. and you were you were sharing with me because for you right I, I believe you get this question a lot. It's being a medical doctor. You studied for so long, twenty over years. You got you got a license uh, to be a medical doctor, and now in into network marketing because there's a lot of uh, people will be thinking that, hey, why are you going to network marketing where you have a doctor to be, where yeah. people, a lot of people dream to be a doctor, and now you're yeah. moving into network marketing. I, I guess that you must have your valid reason why you choose, like you, you, you initially when you started introducing yourself, you say that, hey, initially it was no, no. But when it was something that you can do online, on the internet, you say yes. But is there other thing than just the internet portion? Does the network marketing um, business bother you in the initial part? And if it does, is it still bothering you currently? Maybe you can share with us. Because a lot of people will have that, yeah. that misconception, the myth about network marketing and all that. Yeah. yeah, maybe you can share with us. Yes, it's kind of, I mean, you and I know that when when right now we're more open to it because you know we're exposed to we, we know about business and we know it's a business model but mm. before this i was really like oh my gosh no, what's that and i don't want that you know i've had i've had relatives before who's into it and i really like i kind of like laughed at them you know mm. and then i never thought that i'll be in this right now so i mean when this was first introduced to me i would really say um, I said, really said no, mm. but when it got into, I was actually reading, it was primarily because of Robert Kiyosaki. Okay. If, if you're yes. yes, it was actually because of him. Now, the very first book, which really opened me to, to this kind of business, I was, I read this cash flow quadrant yeah. book by Robert Kiyosaki. Yes. And after that book, I was really searching for a very good network marketing company. Mm. I was the one searching already. What's a very good network marketing company? Mm. Because the very reason, you know, if, if you can see the cash flow quadrant of Robert Kiyosaki, that's yeah. the E, S, and, and the B, I, yeah. and the B, and the I. Yeah. And then 
for you to consider he was saying there for you to consider a business yeah especially if if you're a startup you know if you're a startup entrepreneur you mm. don't have capital you don't have skills yeah. i think you know nothing which is uh, what happened to me i know i know nothing about skills no, you, you, you know medical <laughs> I, i know yes just the medical field and that was it and with regards to business i didn't know anything and number two i didn't have capital Mm. I didn't have money to my bank account. I didn't have money at all because wow. I wish I was fresh graduate. I was a stay-at-home mom. Mm. My husband at that time was still in training in for hepatobiliary surgery. He's mm. a liver surgeon, mm. so oh. was, he was still in training at that time. So technically, there was really I had, really had no money at all. So how can I start a business without? Um, Uh, how can I start a business that Robert Kiyosaki described? Yeah. He actually described that you have to have this business that's system based, mm. wherein even if you leave right now, even if you travel right now, it's still going to be ongoing. Yeah. And the only thing that I thought of at that time that fulfills all those criteria mm. was network marketing. <laughs> So I was actively looking for a net, a very good company, uh, mm. a very good network marketing company. Then I remembered that Yusana was actually um, introduced to me two years before, mm. two years mm. before I actually started. And then I called up the person who invited me two years before, mm. and I said, "Are you still doing this? Mm. Are you still doing this? Can I? Can you? Can you treat? Can you teach me? Can you train me?" And mm. then she said, "She she said immediately, oh yes, doc, I can do that.' <laughs> and that's all." That's how it started. It's mm. really because of that book. If you haven't read that book, please do read it. It's a really nice book. It's really very. You know, I mean, after that book, I was really saying, "I'm in the wrong profession." <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm in the wrong profession. Yeah, you are in the be- S. Yeah, in the S quadrant. <laughs> yes. Before. <laughs> yes, and I should be thanking Robert Kiyosaki because um, he really changed my life. Yeah. I, I really think that he he was the one who really. Um, open my mind into the to the world of business <laughs> yeah and, and for for what and i how should i put it like for me i started my business uh tc creative marketing four years ago and at that point of time i was new and everything that i know about business is zero so yeah in fact one of the first book that i've read i bought in, in fact i bought was uh rich dad poor dad then oh, second yeah. book was cash flow quadrant And after that was was a lot of other his book, <laughs> yeah, almost his his recent book. I I would say that uh, it opened up uh, like the ESBI is very very powerful. Uh, it let you understand why the rich get richer, why the poor get poorer. Um, it's a drastic, especially to this topic we are going to talk about. Uh, where we are talking about empowering mom through entrepreneurship. So for yeah. those who are tuning in and watching or listening, right, Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, you need to get that book. You really has a better perspective. Then you move to get the cash flow quadrant to understand the ESBI. Uh, in in that I would say it's like a bible for all entrepreneurs. I yes. always uh, tell the moms that I coach to really get that book. And the second, I would say, the third book that you should get will be Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. So that is oh. for mothers who want to scale up their business, who want to have more time. Because the number one thing that uh, mothers do not have is time. Yes. Because parenting is twenty four seven, and if yes. you have a business, it's going to take up most of your time. So how yes. are you going to leverage on people like Robert Kiyosaki say in um Rich Dad Poor Dad and Cash Flow Quadrant is uh, there's four different um ways for you to leverage to build a business. Uh, one of them will be leverage on time, leverage on people, leverage on people's talents. Uh, there's one more I can't remember. So basically, you need to leverage on uh on things or talent in order for you to build a business like. The like let's say you are working for a company, your boss is leverage on you and your colleagues to build yes. a business for him. He's leveraging yes. on talent on other people's time. That's how he can build a business. So once you understand the ESBI, you will be able to have a good uh, perspective. I would say like a, like a, a macro view of the business of what you're going to do. Uh, rather than uh, a micro view, which is 
where you are if you're an employee. So the book basically widen, give you a wider perspective about business, about um, how you can, how, what, what business you should be in. Whether are you yeah. in business or are, do you think that you're yeah. in business? In fact, you're not. You're just slaving your time away. Yeah. Like, like you mentioned, uh, like a doctor. Doctor, you need to exchange yeah. time for more money. Uh, although you are not working for someone else, you're working for yourself. But in the clinic, you are still exchanging time for money. And, yes. and you will need to exchange more time for more money. If you, if you do not spend more time in the clinic, you have lesser income. That is a fact. Yes. Yeah. Unless you yes. move up to build a team of specialists or build a team of doctors where you're just managing the business by yourself, then it's a different ballgame. That's where yes. Robert Kiyosaki talked about uh, for a business, to call it as a business, you need to have at least 400 employees. Yes. You really call it a legit business. So that is yeah. like, I would say it is like a guideline for you, for any entrepreneurs that are starting, especially today's topic is about uh, empowering mothers through entrepreneurship. So the knowledge over here about entrepreneurship, about business, ESBI, it has to be in your blood so that yes. you have more perspective. This is something that we as coaches, we as um, as leaders or what you call it, we can't equip you with that. You need to invest in all this knowledge. Like for you, yeah. that, that book basically opened up uh, Yes you to the world of network marketing and really yes. business because network marketing leverages a lot of on people other people's yes. time other people's yes. uh, talent and a lot of stuff talent. yeah yeah so so talk, talking about the network marketing what because for you as a doctor i believe that people will be saying that hey do, uh, Jack, you are silly you are going into the business <laughs> what was yeah. that, what was i would say maybe you can share with us one greatest challenge that you face uh, moving into this business. What is the one greatest challenge? Um, challenge? Yes. I actually still remember, you know, I when I was just still starting, you know, a lot of people really questioning me, questioning my decision. People were actually, you know, my colleagues were colleagues were were mocking me, you know, or they were laughing at me. I mean, why that? That's that's a scam, you know. You know, a lot of people are doing that. That's got, not gonna last. I mean, why are you into that? I mean, only the only those people who are really in dire need of money are doing that. I mean, <laughs> all those kind of stuff. I mean, that's unethical for doctors. I've heard a lot of those, and there was this particular one that I really, really broke down, mm. and I really, really broke down because. These were my mentors. No, these were my mentors. I hope they're not listening in right now. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, they were they were my mentors and I, I, I also look up to them. Yeah. But they were they were the ones who who really questioned me. Mm. And um they were I mean they were criticizing some yeah. some you know, why why I'm into this and it's it was really hard for me. Mm. But the only thing I guess that kept me going at that time was oh you know I'm I'm can you hear this the crack in my voice? Yeah. No, I don't wanna cry. Yeah. <laughs> like I can still remember I mean that that you know, the kind of hurt stays yeah. with you and mm. the kind of pain pain stays with you. Yeah. But that kind of pain pushed me mm. to be, you know, pushed me to work harder, you know, pushed me to to stay on what I believed in. Yeah. You know, being with my son, sticking to my decision, that that kind of, you know, that kind of pain, that kind of challenge mm. really put me. And after that, you know, after feeling that, it actually propelled my network marketing business. Yeah. And it was that because I needed to prove not I guess more also to myself because I really got damaged. You know, I got yeah. I got you know, it was more, you know, I have to prove to myself that this is going to work. I have to prove to myself this is real. I have to prove to myself that this is true. Much to myself than for those people who, who questioned me, I guess. Yeah. And that was the biggest challenge for me. It's, it's difficult because your people will always say, you know, why are you doing this? You, are, you, you, you spend so much. I mean, you have this diploma. You can, do, you can do this and that. Why are you doing that? I mean... Well, if you can just see what's in my heart, if you can just see yeah. what I'm seeing right now, I hope you can see it. But well, that's the 
that's what we get with the you know, network marketing. But well, what my also concern is some network marketing and some people in network marketing are also doing it, you no, know, doing it. I mean, doing it um, not wrong, but doing it differently. Yeah. And and those people and those these people actually tarnish the word yeah. the, the business network marketing, and that's where it hurts me as well mm. because when i see people like this i'm like oh my gosh please stop doing this mm. please stop you know I, I really tell myself that and i hope one day you now we all of the network marketings can treat this profession you know professionally because it really is a very good business model you just have to I mean be very professional about yeah. it like i yeah. i totally feel you because uh i guess it's not just only applied to network marketing it applies to mm -hmm. anybody who's starting a business. Yes. Especially mm -hmm. stepping into entrepreneurship. It's a lonely journey. Uh, you your your biggest dream stealer or dream crusher, maybe the one that always sleep beside you every night. Yeah. Your spouse. Or maybe <laughs> your parents, even your best yeah. friend. But I, I guess it's not just on network marketing, it's in business. Yes. I think and, so. Yeah. And if you have read which that for that you will understand why is that happening because most people don't go into into entrepreneurship or start a business that is no. the, the the minority yeah. and majority will study hard work hard get good grades get in, get a good job work for many many years and hopefully they can retire but most yeah. of them now they can't retire most of them are switching job on most of them are being retrenched and that's where it's very hard for the majority to understand the minority. And mm -hmm. that is how the world works. So, like the struggle that you face, be it network marketing, be it in entrepreneurship, is the same. Like for yes. me, in the beginning, a lot of people yes. don't understand why is a man writing a book about mothers. I don't really <laughs> understand. But when it became your calling, became your purpose, became your mission, yeah. you just have to do it. It's, yes. it's hard. It's really pretty how should you put it? You, you don't really get supporters. Yes. That's why it, it's always good to be mixing with like minded people, yeah. entrepreneurs like you and me, we have a good chat uh in our previous uh video yeah. call. We couldn't stop. <laughs> we enjoyed it. Uh uh yeah. that's why like minded people should hang around more and go uh, yeah. come up I mean, with ideas. I mean, you're right. I mean, I also realized that because I just had a, um, I was invited to be one of the panel, you know, panel speakers in, in doctor, in, uh, in a segment, yeah. it's a convention for doctors in a, and they invited doctors who are in business and all of that, all of those doctors, we were in different, you know, entrepreneur fields. You no know, mm -hmm. one is into real estate. One is into oh. pharmaceutical. Yeah. One is into hotels. You mm -hmm. know, we were in so many in in different fields. And yeah. one thing that's certain, and one thing that's common to all of us, we were sharing our mm -hmm. stories and everything. You were right. I mean, the struggle is there, yeah. especially from the start. The questioning people question you. People, it's always there. And I thought. No, it's not just in network marketing. I yeah. guess they also experience the same way as I did. I mean, it's really inter entrepreneurship. That's entrepreneurship for yeah. you. And, yeah, and that was also really... brings us to, to today's topic, which is empowering. Yeah. So I guess it's, mm -hmm. it's not just into any sort of business. Like in my book, I talk about three types of business. I talk about the brick and mortar business. You can start your own retail mm -hmm. shop. You, start, you can start baking and all that. And yeah. you can, um, can go into network marketing. Like you mentioned, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, now marketing is for people that mm -hmm. have no skill, especially for stay at home mom. You have lost, mm -hmm. lost uh, traction. You have lost the feel of the industry, the corporate world, and all that. And yeah. you may not um, embody the, the the skill set or even um, in handling business. Because I would say that a lot of skills in now marketing. On a lot of network, network marketing uh, provides the training, the person yeah. development. It helps a lot in the future if you were to start a business because you have a good mindset of it. So that is yes. very much into uh, the personal development part that you can start from zero. You can. It is best for you to be a blank piece of paper when you go into network marketing. You know nothing at all. Just yeah. remember, like like the the 
the, the three things I share with you. Be learnable, coachable, and teachable. In any business, in entrepreneurship, these three, three, three skills or um, three things that you need to have uh, in any business, in entrepreneurship, in normal brick and mortar, even in network marketing or even internet marketing. So the last best the, the, the last type of business that you can go in is internet marketing. Like drop yeah. shipping, e-commerce, yeah. maybe e- even becoming an influencer, even YouTube mm-hmm. channel, you being a YouTuber. That's internet. Basically internet marketing and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But the best for a lot of time that I, I've seen is to combine network marketing and internet marketing. Especially yes, for for a working mom or even a stay-at-home mom, the best is to do that because uh, you can do it remotely. You can build a business online. Uh, you can yeah. build... The, the world is the oyster. So yes. this will help yeah. a lot of mothers. I'm not encouraging like you should go into network <laughs> marketing or yes, you should go into yes. internet marketing. If you have a business... Yeah. Uh, yeah. retail business or what you can do it but my my question back to you is as a mom do you have the time to invest so much in your business and lose and lose time taking care of your children so that that is very important so if not then you have to find ways either you build a leadership team or i call a super team or you have a system that uh, leverage on internet and technology that the business can run with or without you. Yes. Then as a mom, you can be able to juggle both your yeah. work, your business yeah. and motherhood. So moving yeah. on and, and I'm, I'm just really curious that you have shared all that and why do you choose to empower moms? Like you brand yourself as a mompreneur and now you have uh, your upcoming mompreneur success summit. Which is yeah. uh, which is not really started by you, but of mothers around, yeah. mothers around. Say, hey, uh, Don't you, why not you start this? So why did why did you want to empower mothers? What was that push factor for you? Because I guess it also started with um with my own with my own story. You know, when I became a stay at home mom, I really felt no. I I was a stay at home mom for for a year. You know, for a year with oh, I did nothing. Yeah, mm. I did nothing. Just really a stay-at-home mom, and I felt all kinds of insecurity. Mm. I felt all kinds of. I felt so useless. I felt so. Oh my gosh, I used to be this and that. Why yeah. am I staying here? I mean, I felt so powerless. You know, I felt so powerless. I felt so unproductive. I didn't want to ask money from my husband. I mean, I really, really felt that. I really felt I felt I felt pity, you know. Yeah. I pitied myself, and I mean, what's happening to me? And it kind of like when I started doing entrepreneurship, it really gave me that, you know, empowerment. You know, I can do this. Oh my gosh, I can do this. I can earn. I can I can be productive. Mm-hmm. I can. I didn't even know like that. So I mean, it's it now became my you know my personal mission to share that what I felt, you know, the, the transition that I felt. The realizations that I had, I want to show them. I want to sh- give that to the moms as well, because if you do entrepreneurship, especially if you know if you do entrepreneurship, if you're a working mom, you will have more time yeah. that you're craving for with with your kids. Mm. If you're a stay at home mom, and if you do entrepreneurship, you will have that kind of you know that 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 power, you know, that you can be more than you are right now. Yeah. And people will say, you know. Aren't you contented being a stay-at-home mom? Mm-hmm. You have so much. No question about that. I mean, I I felt so much love. You know, I felt so much love at home. I, no question about that. It's more of that personal fulfillment. You know, yeah. you. I had this. You know, I had this conversation with a mompreneur, and then he she said it so perfectly that I said, "Oh my gosh, that is the perfect reason that we should go do something." You know, she said like this because she's a mom. She's a mompreneur and. She, his her son is actually a teenager already, mm. and and she said this. Um, one of these days they will grow up. Yeah, they will grow up and they won't need you anymore. Yeah, and what makes that of you? Yeah, you're no longer that stay at home mom. What makes that of you? Mm. I mean, can you afford all those years gone by 
you know, you, you, you lose that part of yourself, you know, mm-hmm. all those years. So do something outside of motherhood yeah. for yourself. And right. that's it. And like, oh my God, that is so <laughs> true. And that's the reason why I want to empower moms because I really believe that you can do so much more. You know, you can do so much more. You can be with your kids, but you can also do so much more for yourself. You know, yes, wow. that's the reason why. <laughs> I, I, I totally agree with that because that is also the, the I would say the vision that I have that any mothers uh, can do anything that they want because yeah. to give birth to a child is unbelievable being, being pregnant for 10 months and if you're going natural birth even if you're not going natural birth cesarean, I guess it's really really Courageous uh, for a mother to really embrace all that and and face all the challenges after giving birth, the fego, the the self esteem, the self confidence, yes. and what that mom printer say is really true, and that is what why I'm doing what I'm doing because a lot of mothers sacrifice their yeah. youth, their talent, whatever they are good at, and over time it became obsolete. Like example, yeah. if, if you don't practice your, as a medical doctor for long, be it five yeah. years, you'll be obsolete because the things that you know may have been yeah. advanced, like medical science is moving so fast, you may have lost track, you may even forgotten all the medical terms. It's, yeah. it's like a, a, a man going into, uh, like for us in Singapore, the, the guys goes into um, national service in, in the army, that two years yeah. basically wipe out every single thing that you remember or you study. <laughs> because every day you're conditioned to be a soldier. So imagine you're so conditioned to be a stay-at-home mom that you only know that, okay, now uh, it's time for me to do my laundry. I know when the sun is coming out. I know when is, uh, when to pick up my son and all that stuff. You only remember all that stuff. You, maybe after that, when your son don't need you, you go back to medical and you felt that you you distant from it. And that's yeah. what a lot of moms, they, in the end, they choose not to go back to corporate and stay at home. And they always yeah. wanted to do something, but they couldn't do it because yeah. the world is kind of like crushing them. That, that you're a mom, you're not committed, you're always at... So there's a, there's a lot of challenges that they face if they, even they return back to work. And a lot of times, uh, they start to deplete, uh, deplete physically, mentally, and psychologically over the yeah. years. Like you mentioned, that realization when your kid became a teenager and boom, where is me? Where am I? Yeah. That's why uh, in a lot of episodes, I share, uh, I talk a lot about self-love, self-care. And that's why entrepreneurship empowers you to be able to do things at your own time, uh, your own terms. And uh, you mentioned about having more time. Um, that one is a bit tricky to have more time being an entrepreneur. Yes. It also depends yes. on what business you go in. That's yes. why um, uh, I, like I mentioned just now, um, two things. Either you build a super team, leadership team, or you build a system that can leverage on technology and yeah. internet. So these are the two business, especially for mothers. So, yeah. For you, you have achieved the dream as a doctor. And mm-hmm. if let's say you, your child did not, your son did not have that condition, would you even ever, uh, ever thought that you would start a business or even move into entrepreneurship? If, you know, I, be, I was asked that, you know, you know so had the situations were, had the situation were different, it was different, you know, um, if my son had didn't have this condition and everything, I really don't think I would be in entrepreneurship. Mm. Trust me. I mean, I wouldn't be pushed to to read these books yes. because I would be really very focused on on what I what I was meant to do. I mean, yeah. what I dreamed of, of doing ever since I was ever since I was little. So yeah. perhaps um, that happened for a reason. Yeah. I've always thought that maybe God planned it, you know, and our creator planned it the yeah. way it should yeah. be. Because had it not happened, I would not be in entrepreneurship at all. Yeah. And, and yeah. one thing I realized that um, after interviewing so many mompreneurs from all around the world, I realized that motherhood seems to be 
a very powerful thing. They can yeah. let go of everything and focus on motherhood, uh, and even to jump into a business that they totally have no idea what it is all about. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a accountant moving, building a a bakery business, which is totally there's no link at all. That's why I I. I realized that motherhood, the child, being with the child is so important to a mother, especially in today's time, that the work environment, the job environment does not, is not able to provide for a working mom, yeah. for a mother, uh, for, for today's mom. Yeah. And that's why I advocate a lot about entrepreneurship for mothers to really build something on your own. And if... Yeah. If there's a business that you can build on, must it must be something that revolves around motherhood. Like for your yeah. case, you can bring your your son all all that means all around with you. Yeah. That you can still be a mother, still building a business. Because the mom friends I know they can bring their child for their business meeting. Like in, in back in back uh, back ten years ago when I was working for motherhood magazine and most of my clients are mothers. One of them was were nursing the, 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 the child while having a business meeting with me. Oh my god. Yeah, it was like that. So so I do to, I do that. I do that. I mean I do that a lot before. I did that a lot before. Yeah. And only yeah. people in parenting will understand. Like for me, I was a new dad, although it's a bit awkward, but I, I totally understand her because the thing that she's selling she is baby pouch. Baby pouch, like baby slings and all that. So she's nursing her daughter and to me is and, and we met at um at their home. Uh, her study room is all packed with her, uh, her her products and stuff like that. So it's that environment that I believe that um a mompreneur. That's how a mompreneur started from home, uh, using the computer. And she was building an e-commerce business. And now her business, her e-commerce business, from one product, it has grown into a thousand over products. And now she has a warehouse on her own. She has a a. Wow. a good established team that can run a business with or without her so that she can spend more time with her family, with yeah. her children. And recent, I think two years ago, she has a, a third child. Mm -hmm. After a period yeah. of 10 years, she has a third child. And I see that it's very, very empowering, very inspiring. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and you can, you, it's not quite possible for you to do it if you are, you are a working mom. That means you have a job yeah. and all that stuff. It's pretty, pretty much uh, challenging. But for her, she's able to do it and not just her, I've seen a lot. So for me, I, I, I see that by sharing like mom story sorry, like you that, that pushes you to step into an area that that you are not aware of that you could do so much. And now you're empowering so many people all around the world, especially mom -preneurs. So what type of business do you think that um, a mom should go into? Like for you, uh, you have already started a business. Like for you, knowing and seeing um, uh -huh. mompreneurs from all around the world, what is the type of business you think that a mother should go in? Oh, for me, it's it's really different, but it really would depend on what your priorities are. Okay, mm. number one, if you if your priority is time, work or find a business that you can work around. I mean, like what Kenneth uh, Kenneth just mentioned. I mean, work build a system, leverage on people, leverage on talents, work around that. Mm. What if, okay, for example, example is network marketing, yep. internet marketing, e-commerce, and drop shipping, like that, build a system around that. But what if you would say, um, neither of those are my passion, mm. no, neither of those. What if my passion is in baking? Mm. Okay, what if my passion is in baking? Okay, for me, I, I, I don't know how to bake, so that's a different story, yeah. but what if my passion is in baking? So my, 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 um, my advice would be, if your passion is in baking, of course you, you do that. But don't do it. I mean, don't do it like you're baking and mm. then, I mean, you do everything on your own. Yeah. That's kind of, that's kind of um, count, being counteractive, you know, counteractive on the, on, on the, I mean, on, the, on your priority, which mm. is having more time Correct. or doing entrepreneurship. It's so tiring if you do it on your own. Yep. So what you can do perhaps is you can you can like hire hire people or you can do that. I what I advise because I have this mompreneur who's actually into baking. Mm. So what I advise her is mix it with internet marketing yep. or network marketing. 
and then do and then do your passion mm. i mean just uh, because you're still starting i mean you're still starting you you want more time you want more time to do your passion yeah. okay so start this first and then eventually when you've already built this you know you can actually do your your, your stuff and then that's when you do your that's when you do your passion because at the end of the day you know we're doing this to have more time for our kids yeah. and it's really it's it's really we have more time for our kids we have more time for our for our family at the same time bringing in profit as well yeah. and being profit as well because that's the reason why we're doing business in the first place yeah. you know it's really for our kids yeah. and that's the re- most of the moms would say the very reason they started business are for their no are, it's for, because of their kids yes yes actually yes. and and that that is the number one priority i realized mm-hmm. for all mom printers from all around the world uh is number one is their kids their family if not for that they don't they won't even start the business um, yeah. Because the business is a form of creating income for them. Mm. Not it yeah. may not be a lot, but it may be something that, like you mentioned, that I do not need to put my hand out and ask money for my husband. Because I myself, I'm an educated woman, and in today's modern world, most women are educated, and they can yeah. do something out of it. And that's where I I I will share that a lot of mothers. You can do what you want to do as long as you put uh, these three P's, which is passion, purpose, and profit. A lot of times, like the, the, the instant, uh, the example that you share about the bakery, like the mom, mother wants to be a baker, want to, she, she loves mm-hmm. baking and have a passion on it. And mm-hmm. she might have a purpose, she wants to provide more, maybe gluten free pastry, gluten free mm-hmm. bakery mm-hmm. stuff for people who are like gluten intolerant and all that. But most of them lack of this part, which is the profit part. And you mentioned yeah. something on the time. As a baker, yeah. you need to invest time on doing it. So yes. one way for you to build a business around that, you can start be the baker yourself, but you need to start finding a uh, successor to take over you yeah. or build a yeah. system. A system may not be something like you need to use computer. It's just system that means step by step what you need to do, yeah. like how McDonald's do- does it. McDonald's has yeah. this system like this burger should be like that the big, uh, the, the big platter should be like that and all that stuff so you need to have a system so this system only you you will know how to do it you just get each yeah. and individual people like you can be the person that is doing the, the recipe and yeah. and maybe an assistant will start to do the dough for you which yeah. is the hardest part yeah. so yeah so you, you, you can you can just systemize it and see what are the things that you you need to take yes. ownership yes. and the rest you can outsource or get an assistant to do it yeah. rather than sacrificing and even to run workshop you can always train someone to run the workshop follow your curriculum and that's it and that is how exactly. you build system and you build business so that exactly. you can use this uh, system to, to take off some time for you uh, to yes. spend more time with your, your family members because your first priority. That's why a lot of mompreneurs, when they start off, they say, oh, why am I doing so much? I'm like spending so much time um, in my business. And my husband is telling me that, hey, darling, the, why are you spending so much time and effort and money into the business when it's not <laughs> making any profit? So that's why a lot of them felt that their dream had been crushed. So mm-hmm. having known that um like the type of business that mothers should should go into, um, mm-hmm. this this is something that I always tell all the mothers, maybe for the viewers that are tuning in, is to build a business revolving around motherhood and solving a motherhood problem. Because you yes. as a mom, yeah, you have a lot of problems. Everybody has a lot of problems. Mothers have a long list of problems. Find yeah. one that you're passionate about or you know how to solve it. For example, yeah. like laundry hacks. Maybe you know how to, to, to do your laundry <laughs> in the shortest time. And any any, any I, I business, love that. Yeah, any, yeah, correct. So if you can solve that, basically, yeah. if maybe you are a chemist. Maybe you can develop something that can do the laundry fast or develop a, a machine, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So to do a business that is revolving around motherhood, yeah. Or leverage on technology mm-hmm. and the business has to help the mother to save time. Exactly. Any of the three three factors, you are good to go. And yeah. um yeah, so so this is this is something that I, I would say that the type of business that I will encourage mothers to go into. 
and also like for, for like we have been talking about work business and for you i can see that you're balancing work and life business and motherhood really really well so do you believe in like work-life balance and also uh, motherhood and business balancing both of them um i uh, for me hi guys welcome back uh that's this time around i guess things happen for a reason um it's it's always wonderful uh, when when we go online and a lot of things will happen. Uh, it's like entrepreneurship. Uh, things happen and you just have to react to it. Uh, this is not the worst. Uh, I've, I've experienced a lot. And let's let's welcome Dot Chat again. And if you if you be wondering why is she looking so dark in the background, it's because uh, it, it like she she told us like it only happens don't know like maybe once in a very very long time and. It happens that she has a blackout, so it applies to entrepreneurship. Oh yeah, it's, it's really, really wonderful. Uh, we are going to wrap up uh, soon. So, uh, like we were talking about the work-life balance, and now, uh, amazing things that happen. Yeah. So, not yet. Why is your <laughs> maybe I will let, let 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 you cool down first. Yeah. So now she's logging in using her phone. Yeah. So thanks a lot for that. You know, I'm. I'm really like laughing because would you would you believe this is the first time that ever happened? You know, I I I do a lot of online stuff, and then this is the first time. Maybe it's really gonna show. You know, maybe it's really gonna show you that things happen. You know, things happen. Your know, mishaps happen, yeah. like this one. <laughs> but whatever, whatever, whatever mishap or whatever challenge that you do, you just have to continue. You just have to go on. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all right. So I mean. <laughs> I mean, work-life balance. For me, it's kind of a, it's, it's really tricky when you say work-life balance because for me, there really isn't uh, such a thing as work-life balance. But there is such a thing as a making up for, for what was lost, you know. So, for example, like this. I really don't believe in work-life balance because when you say work-life balance, it has to be like this. Mm. So... I mean, it has to be like this. I mean, it has to be like three hours of this, three hours of this, six hours of this. I mean, it has to be like really balanced. You know, everything is equal. So for me, it's more of, I mean, it's more of giving off time more of this and giving up, giving more time more of this. So it's kind of not, not about balancing it, but making up for the ones that you prioritize. Mm. You no, know, giving more time for those for which that you prioritize. You know? yep. So you can have that. You can make up, for example, um, for this week you have so much going on for your business that you have to make up, that you have to really have to do it. Yep. And then you you come back again. Oh my, back. Oh my, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Ken, okay. what's happening? <laughs> like testing testing your entrepreneurship Agree. Um, <laughs> yes, it is. It no is. Worries. So are we are we still online? Yeah, no. yeah, we're still on. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> okay, so we're back. Okay, so like I said, so for example, for this week, you have to, you're swamped with work, but you have to finish it, and you're going to finish it because it's business. But then you you also you you tend to like get time off from from motherhood or from spending time with your son. Mm. That's okay, yeah. and that's okay. So that's not work balance, right? But on the next week, make sure, or on this weekend, make sure that you make up for what was lost. Yeah. So for me, I like I said, it's more of making making up what which do you prioritize? No, which you giving more time to? I mean, giving more time to which do you prioritize? So that so make making it work that way gives you you know gives you the the, the results that you want results that you want for 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 your for your kid for your son mm. for your family and and for your business and always you know, with regards to you know it's really all about time right we have we're given 24 hours we're given the same 24 hours in a day and what what do you do with your time for me my best my best advice would be either, whatever you do right now for example set schedules right yeah. such set, set schedules for like for example this this for three hours, I will be spending time with my son. And then for the next three hours, I will be working. And if you do that, be 100% 
present. Yeah. I mean, be really in the moment. Give it your all. Give it your 100%. Yeah. Because, I mean, you owe it, for example, you owe it to your business to do that. You owe it to your son to do that. You owe it to your husband to do that. Give 100% at those scheduled time that you have. Mm. And that way, you can work it out. No, be it's really no don't think about when you're spending time with your son don't think about business if you're spending time with business don't think about you know so do be in the moment be 100 percent present yeah. know, uh, within your you know schedule yes, yes so that's it thanks thanks a lot for <laughs> that, that yeah. great great tip yeah. and that is also what i believe in being 100 percent present whether is it with your child mm-hmm. or is it in your business or at your at your work so um so for you you were saying that you do not believe in work life balance which is good yeah. Um, mm-hmm. because work-life balance for me, although my book is all, mm-hmm. uh, is about perfecting the balance between my home and business, I would say uh, in my book I have a twist to that, uh, which is mm-hmm. like you you mentioned that every one of us believe that balance has to be like that fifty fifty mm-hmm. and stuff like that. That was yeah. what we were yeah. conditioned to think and thought. Mm-hmm. But um, that's one of the mom pronouns, uh she shared with me in the and I featured it in a book mm-hmm. is. When you think about balance, when you want to balance work and life, is when you are not having that balance. Because when you are balanced, you don't even need to think about it. You don't even need to find ways and means to balance it. And and yeah. for me, after I've observed a lot of mom um, I realized that the, the, the key to balancing right is happiness. When you don't yes. have a balanced life, you basically you are not happy. Uh-huh. You felt that you are not yes. you are not doing enough and stuff like that. So it's the the yeah. key to balancing is happiness. So for yeah. for my case is uh I spend seventy percent with family because that is for yes. me is my happiness level and thirty yes. percent into my business. That's what I believe. Yes. And yes. that is also the reason why I leverage on the internet, why I create system, yeah. I build a remote team, I build a virtual team, so that I can do 70% with my family and 30% in the mm-hmm. business. So I have to be more creative yeah. to find ways and means for me to do less work but more yeah. productive. So uh, so that's one yeah. of the way. But there are business owners that wanted to do the reverse, which is um, maybe 30% in the family and 70% into work. Which is not yes. wrong, because some yeah. not all parents have that that, that yes. nurturing nurturing uh, urge to really with, be with their family. Some of them are may, may, yeah. maybe they get more satisfaction from work. Like my wife, my wife, uh, she spend more time at her work. She get more satisfaction from bosses, praises, and all that stuff. Maybe parenting she might not enjoy that much, but it's okay. That's where I yes. come in to to complement the other part, and this is what mm-hmm. balance is. So yeah. balance is about happiness, about yeah. about having um, the fulfillment in whatever that you're doing. Yes. You're so right. so that, that is you're right. <laughs> yeah, I I love that what you said about it's happiness, you know, prioritizing happiness, fulfillment, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. Yeah. So um and also for you, you've been in business, you mix with people who are in business. So do you believe that moms should start business? Yes, 100%. Yes. I mean, it happened to me. It, it, I experienced it and I really believe in it. And I really believe moms should start in the business. Wow. wow. That, I, I, for me, is yeah. I understand that entrepreneurship is not for everyone. But mm-hmm. everyone can give it a, a shot. Because today yeah. you have internet, you have technology, you have all the all the knowledge, all the information online, especially on YouTube. So there's no reason for you not to go to give entrepreneurship a try. Even the kids are doing it. Even kids 10, yeah. 11 years old, they are building our own business, selling slime. Yeah. So yeah. what is stopping you as a, a an adult, a mother from yeah. from all this thing? So um, yeah. thanks a lot. Uh, and it, and Sorry, I mean, I was saying like it's also in business that you grow a lot. I mean, you develop yourself a lot. I mean, you there are so many aspects in business. It's not just about gain. I mean, profit. It's not just about income. But you you actually grow into 
you know, into into this person, into this bigger yeah. person. Correct. Yes, yeah, so that's that's why I really, you know, I really would want moms to be in business because of that. Yeah. It's really on the development and personal development. Yeah. It's I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> And, and something to add to that, other than just a personal development, mm-hmm. I also believe that uh, when a mom steps into business, uh, be a bigger person, serving the community, even yes. mothers, uh, your children will look at you differently. You are the great model, yes. you're inspiring people, you're empowering people, and for them, they will feel empowered at the same time and feel, hey, my mommy is doing something like that and I will want to be like her. So, and, and I realized that Children that is brought up in the entrepreneurial environment or mothers or parents who are entrepreneurs, yeah, you're getting getting all the like back. <laughs> Welcome back. Yeah. Okay, I know you're excited, but uh, the connection is <laughs> not coming back. Yet. Anyway. Yeah. So uh where was I? Yeah, so I was saying that um to the the, the children that the is being brought up by entrepreneurial mompreneurs. Uh, they seem to be different from most of among their peers. They seem to have more leadership skills, more life skills, more survival skills, uh, social skills, uh, critical thinking, a lot of things. These are skills that academic could not give it to them. So this is something that I realized as after interviewing mothers from all around the world, having children at different age group, uh, stages of life, it's pretty much that um, is true. That. So um, now we are we are coming to the, almost to the end of the show. Although I I guess that because of the technical things, um, a bit of time <laughs> lost. Uh, but it's interesting. This is so far. I, I would say this is will be my most memorable uh, <laughs> live show. Yeah. So especially having your laughter is is really it really makes this this show the best. Yeah. And I, I guess you will remember this, your most memorable yes. interview. Yeah. 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 So, uh, have some, uh, have some time to think. Um, um, like, like, like the question of the day. Now it's your turn for the question of the day, Dodget. Uh, share it with us. Um, what is your question of the day? That this question of the day will be posted out to. The audience and also to the next guest. So for those who are still tuning in, um, do share with us your answer for Dot Jet's question of the day. So Dot Jet, share with us with your question of the day. All right. So my question for today is: um, since I'm a mom um, in network marketing, mm. uh, so what do you know? What is your what is your stand, or what do you think about? moms in doing network marketing mm. you know so right. what is your stand what is your what is your stand or yeah what is your stand <laughs> yeah that was my that is my question what is your stand or what do you think of moms doing network marketing okay so the question of the day posted by you is what do you think about moms oh. uh-huh. doing network marketing mm-hmm. okay so that is your question of the day. All right. Okay. So um, the question of the day posted by Dot Jet is, what do you think about moms doing network marketing? So this question <laughs> of the day goes out to the next guest and also out to the audience who are tuning in. Do share with us your answers to Dot Jet's question of the day in the comment section. Uh, both of, both of us will be very very glad to um to see your answers and do yes, let us you. know what's your, your thought what do you think about moms doing network marketing do share it with us in the comment section and last but not least Dr. Uh, what is your last advice for mothers who are thinking of pursuing their passion or even starting your, their business okay so my 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 advice would be um i've already said this I mean, I know you're you are you are a mom, right? So you're a mom, but you can you can really do so much more. And if you are now starting to think about you no know, doing business, I mean, still be a mom, but work around you no know, work around. Find something that you are passionate about, mm-hmm. and that passion you turn it. I mean, you work around that passion, wherein you can also give. You know, you can 
you can offer something significant to the world and you mm -hmm. can offer something significant i mean you can help you can solve a problem just like what kenneth a uh, what kenneth said you know passion and that's purpose mm -hmm. you know passion first you find what's your passion what you're passionate about if it's motherhood your passion find work around that work around that find your purpose what can you give to the world i mean yeah. what can you offer to the world that is your business and for and then the third that's like your three piece no mm -hmm. passion purpose profit but for me my third would be aside from profit i would say you know mean significance and family you know, significance and family mm -hmm. never never forget that you are you know you are doing this mm -hmm. because you want to be with your family so that's it so passion purpose profit for you family and significance wow yeah that, that, that yeah. is so cool that's your great advice and um how can uh, the audience get connected with you maybe you can share with us all right all right so i am in you know i have a facebook i my facebook page is mompreneur md so that's mompreneur and then letter m letter d yeah it's mompreneur md i also have this in uh, i also i am also in instagram as mama dog jet if you're wondering i'm just really starting in instagram i'm just starting to make it public mm. you know i'm kind of a private person before this yeah. so in instagram i'm mama doc jet and i have this upcoming mompreneur success summit no it's not just me it's not just me is going to be in the summit there's going to be 30 to 50 wow. you know mompreneurs from all over the world including our very own <laughs> mr kenneth Chu. yes i was so it, it's such an exciting you know it, it was such an exciting session with you i mean i've had so many you know i i am going to gather all these mompreneurs from all over the world successful mompreneurs mm. from different fields from baking from e-commerce from network marketing from every business that you can think of you know from life coaching and everything so i've, I've i'm gathering all these mompreneurs really to help you you know to help the moms start upscale and really get them empowered in business mm -hmm. it's going to be happening uh, i'll be launching it this november uh the website is mompreneursuccesssummit.com wow. you can check it out yeah, yeah. i will i will add um whatever um mm -hmm. connection that you can connect with dot jet in the description um you can source it from there as, especially for the mompreneur success summit dot com i will also mm -hmm. add it in to the description so um time really flies and really thank uh thank <laughs> dr Jeff for making time although it's uh this session i would say this session is really a <laughs> unforgettable one uh really exciting interesting i guess it's also past uh, my technical skill to get get things popping <laughs> up and, and um doing a lot of things that i've not done uh in all in one episode so I'm um, so thankful that uh, all this thing happens. It just shows that uh, entrepreneur entrepreneur really takes a lot of things with a pinch of salt. I think happen. We laugh about it, and it's okay to fail. There's nothing to be yeah. bad about it. That like like oh, it's such a failure that the whole internet is going down. It's okay. You just pick yourself up in the shortest time. Uh, like like Dodger, keep connecting back, keep connecting back in the shortest <laughs> time. So that is that shows how um what is the perseverance that we have as entrepreneurs. We just keep on bouncing back every time we fall down, we fail, we come back stronger again. And now you have all the lines, and now we're in high resolution. Some also, it's really really interesting. And um yes, so today uh for those who are tuning in, who are still on live, do post us the question that you want to ask anything about entrepreneurship especially towards today's topic this is especially for those uh, that are tuning in to now and those who are watching replay do let us know what any question that you have for me or dot jet so uh, last but not least uh, kenneth here signing out with dot jet thanks for watching mother industry live show with dot jet and uh, thanks for making time and thanks for tuning in and i shall see you guys in the next episode see you guys bye Bye, Bye. Bye, bye, Ken.